Welcome to the Alchemistic Laboratory. In this tutorial we're going to make this sword. I think it's quite an exercise to do in plasticity and I'm sure you will enjoy following it. And after, when we move to Blender and put some materials, the sword should look something like this. So now let's get started. Okay, first things first. We go to the front view, delete the cube, and we drag and drop our reference image. We just put it a bit in the center, I would say something like this. And we make the material transparent, so we make it this front, 30%, and front only. Move this a bit to the back. Okay, to start the sword, I would say I will start with the handle. So I will draw some lines here. Something like this. Then I just mirror it with Alt X and I draw one point here, another point here, and finally here. Now the point in the middle, I will just move it out, I would say something like this. And we need to make a loft. So I craft from here to here loft. And from here to here L for loft. I craft the faces, join them with J, mirror them on the Y axis and join them. So now it's a solid. So now we have this piece. I would say I would cut these holes, so we'll come with a line around here. So now that we have this piece, I mirror it. So these two lines, now I'm going to cut the object with C. And I have this piece. And I also need to cut somehow here, so I also draw some control point curve here control point curve and I just draw try to make something similar I cut the object join the lines first and then cut the object so something like this you can experiment your own lines maybe different shapes but I think for me it's okay now here could either be a cylinder or a sphere. Let's try to do it as um, a sphere. And now what we need to do is similar to the video of the health potion. I need to make some lines. I will uncheck the face snapping so I can snap on this axis. And I just draw some lines like this. And this, I would say, it's like a hexagon. This yellow or golden part is a hexagon, I think. So I draw a regular polygon from this point. And with shift and drag, I can make more or less points. So in this case, I just stick to six. And around the same size, the yellow part, I will flip it with vertical and something like this. So I have this shape. So this I can move here, and this line I can also move here. This line, now I need to imprint it. So now I have the direction I want it. So this we can already hide. And this one, I can put it to this point, snap it to this point, there. Now this curvature, I just need to press Shift D to convert it to a curve. And from here I can grab this hexagon, and I just look for curve array and click on this. This object, as we saw in the health potion, this object needs to come from thin to thicker. So now let's make the scale a bit more. Let's say something like this and accept. And now with everything selected, I can just press L to loft and I have this shape already. These polygon curves, I can just hide them or delete them. And from here, I can just mirror it, join them and mirror it on the x-axis too. Join them. Now you see here, this is strange. Here is like a point. So for these situations, I can just draw some lines here and I can just mirror it. And I grab these two curves and I can just cut the object. I grab this piece and this piece, delete them. So I should have something like this. And then I grab the face and the face over here and press L to loft. Now this should smooth 
this object. If I would have cut it a bit more here, more to the sides, then it should have gone a bit more straight. But for this tutorial, I think it's okay. Then I can just mirror this object in the X axis and there I have it. So I just need to join all these pieces, Q and Q to make it a solid. So now I have this object. Should be a bit more above, but doesn't matter. It's just for demonstrations. Now I can leave it still like a sphere or I can maybe make it a cylinder. This I need to decide later. So now I need to make this thing on the handle. So for this, I can make some center circle, draw a circle from here, press V to make it vertical or horizontal. Then I just duplicate it, scale it on the white circle. And here I just need to go around the middle point, the thinnest part and scale it. Something like this. And I can just grab this one down here, duplicate it with Shift D, and just bring it here, I think it should be. Now, for this part, I can maybe also duplicate it again, scale it. And here, I'm not so sure if I should make another one, but just let's do it to be safe. Okay, so now it's just a matter of grabbing these lines and make a loft. This position should be straight, so I cannot just grab everything and make a loft. I need to go one by one. So I just grab here, loft, come here and here, loft, here and here, loft. Now these three curves need to be in a continuous shape. So for this, I grab this the second and the third and I just press loft, so it makes this curvature. So I have almost the handle and we can just grab these faces and join them. If I want to make it a solid, I need to patch it. So I'm just going to hide or delete these curves, grab and press command shift P, or P to patch and here as well, command shift P. It's not so bad, but this sphere, I'm not so fan yet. I will try to hide it and we try to expand this face just by grabbing it. And maybe the sphere, I can scale it. Maybe something like this looks much better. So for the moment, I leave it like this. Okay, so what else? We need to make these patterns. So let's just draw some lines. So this line and this line, I'm going to join them. Then I'm just going to duplicate it with Shift D, move it here, duplicate, move it and duplicate and move it. I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to press Shift I to imprint the curve. Okay, now that I have imprinted these lines, I'm going to grab them and I'm going to move a bit down and I'm going to imprint them again. Now I'm going to grab these faces and I'm just going to offset them a bit inside. Not so much, it needs to be comfortable to grab. And I think it looks good. Now I just need to make some chamfer and fillets and I think it would look even better. So I can just delete these lines now. Okay, now I want to make some chamfers here. So for this, I think it's faster if I just grab the faces like this and press control two. And now I can make the chamfers. In this case, I will, with control, I will on select this piece and maybe on select this one down. So I just want these ones in the middle and I can make a soft, a soft fillet. Now these ones, I can also make some fillets here as well. here and also in this piece. So I grab the whole line and also the one down and okay. And here as well. And here I can also grab everything. So I grab these faces 
and I just press Ctrl 2 to convert the selection to edges. And from here, I can just make a soft fillet. Okay. And I need to grab also these lines. Maybe these ones too on the side. And make the soft fillet. This makes the object much more appeal to the eye. Let's do something similar like we did here with this object, but here, because as I understand, there is also this section here. Okay, so I unhide this handle. And what I need to do is just, I'm going to draw one line that goes here. So I'm drawing the line somewhere in the middle here, and I just come this place. Maybe I try to follow the same angle. I will grab the line and make it a bit more parallel to this line down here, so it doesn't look so bad. And I am going to imprint it to the handle. Okay, so exactly the same as we did down or below. I'm going to grab another hexagon, snap it to the point, and I just press Shift and drag, press B to make it vertical, and something like this. So I have this side, and this one we need to convert just this section here. I can convert to a curve with Shift D. I just need to grab the hexagon, press F, look for curve array, select the curve. And I just need to make the scale a bit bigger. And I think it's correct. I can press L to loft. And now I have this object. These curves I can delete. And now I just need to mirror this on the x-axis, join it, and mirror this on the x-axis negative. So in this case, I'm just going to press Alt-X, F to make a freeform. And now I select this edge from the set and go up or down, and so. Now in this situation, this is not good, so we can just easily fix it by joining these two pieces. I'm going to hide everything else with shift H and exactly the same. I'm going to draw a curve, maybe a bit closer, mirror it, and cut the object with these two objects, with these two curves. I have this piece. Now I can just grab this and patch it, this patch. I can also loft the lines, but I actually like to use the loft in the faces. So now I grab this and this, loft, this and this, and loft. Okay, much better. We can also do the same here, cut, and this would smoothen instead of being so pointy and so sharp. Boolean it, Q and Q. So how does it look? Doesn't look so bad, but I want to try how it looks with the object cutted. So I'm just drawing some line here, mirroring, C to cut, delete these objects, here and here loft, and here and here loft. I think both are correct. This gives a bit more coherence with the lower part, with the upper part, so I think I will leave it like this. So I just need to combine these pieces, Q and Q, make the fillets, and accept. Okay, so now we are moving with our handle. I suggest we start with the Maybe it's a good idea if we start with these cross parts. I will draw a line from here in the middle, somewhere here. From here I will draw some control point curve. So I draw something like this. Okay, something like this. Another control point curve. And I can just mirror this one, join it, and mirror this on the y-axis. Can mirror this on the x axis. I can come and I think I will first draw from here. Mirror. Control point curve to draw another curve here. And just mirror it again and mirror this curve again. I'm going to trim this, the scissors with T. Trimming this part. And I can finally grab this face and extend it. Now let's see if it's possible to make this 
thing. So I select this face, Ctrl 2 to select the edges, and I just make a hard chamfer. I think it's looking not so bad. So yeah, I will leave it like this. I like it. And now I'm going to make these cylinders. So I craft a cylinder here. And somehow here in the middle, I draw like this. And the face, something like this. I grab this cross and move it a bit in front. Okay, so I just put it a bit like this. I will leave it a little bit like this for the moment. Now it says that I need to make another offset here. Now I fully move it inside. I want to only have this piece. I grab this face, control two, and make a hard chamfer. Now it's not possible yet to make this completely gone, but if I just select this face and press X, it will make it sharp. I think it's just how we need it here. It's very difficult to understand here. Anyway, I think I will leave it for the moment. I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to draw a center circle and somehow the same size as this. Grab it, make a face or a solid. Now all these curves I'm going to hide and let's see how it, it should be. A chamfer and then a chamfer and this should be flat as I understand. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line, imprint it in the object. This one I am going to push it almost to the back so it's still having a solid down and I'm going to grab this face Control 2 and I'm making a chamfer. Hard chamfer like this. Okay, now you need to be careful. I'm going to draw a sphere and this sphere is going to snap to this point, but I'm going to press B to make it a new body and accept. Otherwise it will make a boolean out of one of these objects and this we don't want. Then I'm going to scale it on this axis a bit less and move it a bit back going to hide this cross. So if you see it from the side view, I want that the sphere is just a bit coming out. Maybe I will scale it a bit more. Okay, now we have this piece. What we need to do is cut the cross so that it's not disturbing. So I think it needs to be cutted from this edge here, the one I'm selecting now. So I'm going to draw a center circle here and I'm going to hide on height the cross, cut this and I'm going to hide this piece. I'm not so sure I should delete it. I'm grabbing these objects and I'm going to move them a bit to the back, something like this. We should move it a bit more in the front. So. Something like this. And this piece here, now it's cutting itself. It does seem like this is a bit in front and this one. So let's see how it looks. No, it could be, it could be, I'm not so sure yet. Okay, I'm not so sure. And also here, I don't like this. So I'm going to make a hard chamfer. Because anyway, this one has the chamfer. So I suppose this one should also have it. Try to be congruent with this design, although it's not so easy to see. And this one, and this face, I can maybe make something like match face with this face. And we do the same here. I, I grab this face. And I just come down here to match face, this face here. So now what I'm going to do is from the center here, I'm going to draw to this. Cut this object and cut this object. So these extra pieces, I don't need, delete them. Okay. I think it should look better. These curves and lines, I don't need, so I'm going to hide them with the light bulb. And I think it's done. I just need to come with a solution 
for this handle down here. Okay, so now this piece is not correct, it's overlapping over the other object. So what I'm going to do is just grab a line somehow here, mirror it, join the two lines, and I'm going to cut the object. So this extra piece I can delete and it should be better. I need to find after a solution for this piece. So what I need to do now is this sort of spikes. I don't know. So for this, I think of maybe drawing a cube corner box. Draw it somewhere here. Now the size needs to be square. So let's say, for example, 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters and 10 centimeters. Accept. I grab all these edges and make a chamfer, something like this. Now I just grab the faces in the middle, just the faces in the middle, press X. Now the faces in the middle, horizontal, delete, and on the side view, I'm going to select as well the faces, only the ones in the middle. So now I have this sort of shape, which seems to be the same shape as these spikes. So for this, I just, I'm going to duplicate it, rotate it maybe 45 degrees and put it around here. So I'm moving it here in the middle. Now I duplicate this again, move it in front, rotate it 45 put it in the middle of the x-axis and I think it's correct. Then these ones, I think they should be flat. Okay, I'm going to make them flat. So I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to press B for making the pivot and I just put it somewhere here and I just snap it to this edge. So it should be really, really flat. I think it's better like this. Now this prisma or object, I'm going to make it as well in the middle. Maybe scale it a bit more, mirror it and duplicate it, put it in the center, rotate it 90 degrees. Now, I'm not so much fan of this place, how it looks here floating. This one I need to duplicate. Now these ones are too much in front. I realized that there should be more in the back. Maybe some. So now for this face, I'm going to craft, going to draw a um, control point curve, mirror this line, move it a bit in front so that you see. Then I just craft a line here. Mirror it. I joined the, the curves and what I need to do is just imprint it. And this face seems to be a bit inside. I convert it with Ctrl 2 and I deselect this line. And then I just offset it just a bit. So, because I'm going to craft this and extrude it outside. So I should have something like this. Now, what I need to do is convert it to curve. Again, deselect this line. I think I will keep a hard chamfer. I do the same with this face her chamfer. Now I select all these things and make it soft. And I do the same thing here. Okay, something like this. Just try to do it much better at home. And you see here I need to have a sphere, very similar to this one here. So let's draw a center, center circle. Imprint it, push it a bit inside, 
we can grab this here. So I can just duplicate it, put it in the center and scale it down. And this will make a chamfer like this and so. Now these are too big. So just I need to scale them. Maybe scale them to in this axis. I think this will look much better in the end. So I am sometimes inventing through as I go. Now I can just mirror these objects and I think I like it more. Now here I will try to make a chamfer. This one I also chamfer a bit. This one as well. It's just a matter of chamfering everything. I suppose I need to make the same chamfers here. And here as well. Okay, I think it looks better. Now we can just grab these objects, mirror them in the y-axis. Q and Q. Great. Now these objects you can also mirror them. We just connect them. So there is a little gap here. I'm just going to grab this, loft it, and here and here loft it and convert it to solid. Okay, so now we just need to do the same we did here. We need to do it here. So for this I can grab, maybe it's faster if I just grab these lines, offset it inside like this. I grab the same, offset it, push this inwards, grab these lines and make Okay, now this piece should also connect to this one. So I suppose I can just make a match face. And there we have it. I think it's okay. We need to bring as well the sphere. So I duplicate this, scale it down. We put it in the center. We draw a center circle. And print it. This one we put it a bit down. We make a bit of chamfer with a fillet. Okay, I think we are almost done with this. We just need to mirror it. Mirror and again, we just need to... Now for some reason it's not lofting. So it could be that I need to first delete the redundant topology. And now... Loft it. Yeah, now it works. I suggest here we make a little cylinder and fill it down so it's more like an oval shape from the top view. Okay, now what we can do is start to make the blade and then we are finished with our sword. Now, this connection between the handle and the sword, I'm not so much fan of it. What if we make a cylinder? Or a sphere. Maybe this the sphere gives a bit much more rigidity to the object. Okay, now what we can do, we can delete this curve. This solid, I think we don't need it anymore. I delete it. And we are almost finished. I need to put one of these two. Somehow I deleted it. And now I can just rotate it 90 degrees. Go a bit down. Okay, so it's like a, a gem there. Okay, it does look like a bit a holy handle. Now it is much more likely that I need to scale the object in the center. So most likely I will grab everything and scale it so. Now it does look much more sturdy and grotesque. This I like, it's a bit more fantasy. Okay, now that we have our handle and we scale it, I think it looks better if it's scaled. What I need to grab is this object and this object. And I have an idea. What if all the faces that are inside, make them aloft, like it in G1. Okay, so now the last part we need to do is just the sword or the blade, actually. So I'm making a control point curve and I draw a bit of a curvature there. 
I continue here. Now this bike, I'm not so fan. How does it look if I just draw it straight? Doesn't look so bad. So I will stay here. Maybe this one I still respect. And here I can just draw some lines, something like this, and come here in the middle. Now, mirror them. And if I just scale this object, let's say that I make it like this, because here is too much difference with this other side, this one and this one, make this part, it's not going to work. So for example, I make this section. It's not really going to work because already here is breaking. So it's too much difference. So for this point, it's not good if I just make a chamfer. For this area, it's maybe better if I just make some lines, move it in front, and then and then make a loft. So I have this line and this other line outside, and I just need to loft it. Okay, now we have this line of the sword and we can just bring it a bit in front. We can maybe hide everything else behind. I need to concentrate on the blade now. I suppose this is not so bad. This instance is not so bad. So I just need to make a loft. So from here, I can maybe delete these ones to not be distracted. So from here to here, loft. From here to here, loft again. And from here, loft, loft, and loft. So now we have this sword. I join all the faces, mirror them, join them again. I need to make a patch. And now we can just mirror it on the Y axis and join it. And now we have a solid. So what we need to do is just make these shapes. How can we do this? Okay, so I suggest we make a line to here, mirror it can make like this. And we can trim this part, this part and this part. Now I need to make another one here. So what I can do is offset this one because I made the mistake to trim it too early. So I put it like this. And here I just select two point circle. So I put the circle and the circle. Put it a bit in the center and cut the object. So now I have the hole. These curves I can maybe hide. And what else we need to do? Okay, now I would like to offset this inside part. So we we'll select this, this, and these lines and offset it. Okay, so now we have the offset. What I need to do is hide this image. This distracts me a lot. And I need to push this face but I'm realizing that if I push this thing, here will cause some troubles. And anyway, it's not going to be visible there because the circle of the of the blade is there. So I will draw a line, something like this, and I will imprint it. Imprint this curve here. So I just have this face. Now this face I can push inside. Uh, something like this. And I can just grab all the outer edges and just make some hard chamfer. Something like this. I grab this, this. And 
Now I'm going to delete redundant topology. I graph this one in the center, like this, hard chamfer. Mm -hmm. Now it's much better. So the only part is missing is here on the blade somehow. So I select this face, make, um, or actually I'm just going to select this. And I'm going to make an offset. Not so big. Take this face a bit out. So you see how it's looking. Accept. And I just grab these ones. And, and I think the sword is finished, or at least the blade. I cut the blade and I'm going to mirror it. Join the solids, Q and Q. And these curves I can also delete. And we have our sword, our holy sword. So the only thing is missing here is this is too sharp. I don't like it. So I'm going to make a bit of chamfer. So, and I think now we can finally say that we finished the sword. It was a bit complicated to figure out all the perks or all the things that had here with the circle. That was a bit strange. And also here, I suppose we can cut this so I'm going to make a center circle and I'm going to cut the plate somewhere here so that it doesn't disturb. This I can delete. Now we have finished our sword. Now before we move to Blender, I would like to remind you about the tutorial that I'm selling. It is in Gumroad. I will leave the link down below in the description. With this, you can support the channel a lot. I appreciate the ones who have bought it. If you're interested in it, I am going to make some Mega Man models. We're going to start from scratch, how to learn the software, and we will move on towards some advanced tools. And I'm quite sure you will enjoy it. If you also want to further support the channel, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. This helps really a lot the channel. So now I think we can finally move to Blender, put the materials, and see how it could look in the end. Okay, the render is almost finished. There are some tweaks I need to do. For example, the scratches in the sword needs to be smaller. Maybe some tweaks in the materials, but in general, I'm quite happy. And if you also like the content, I would like to ask you for a like, share and subscribe. This helps a lot. So thank you all for your support. And I think at this point we can say ex luto ad aurum. Until next time. Thank you.